Did you ever wonder why some software engineers are standing out from the masses and then ask yourself, how did they become so successful and how can I be just like them? Well, hear me out. Hi, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joke and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way. In this video, I would like to present you 5 habits plus one small bonus habit that will make you a successful software engineer. And just to give you some context up front, I didn't just pull those 5 habits straight out of my ass. I've talked with other senior software engineers from my current project about what they think will make someone more successful as a software engineer. And I would like to present you the results intermixed with my own experiences. Since I value your time, let's jump straight in without much more blah blah. We probably all know the situation where the team gets notified about an issue or a bug in our application and everybody is busy working on their own things and everyone would rather continue with what they are currently working on. And in situations like these, it's easy to say, yes, yeah, someone else will take care of it or yeah, it's not my fault, so it's also not my problem. And this is exactly what you should avoid. Take ownership even if it is something that somebody else worked on. By actually handling the issue yourself, you will build core skills that will help you be more successful. When talking with my colleagues about it, I noticed that I actually did this quite a lot in the past and it helped me to learn how to systematically find and solve problems, get to know the system way better, and also I learned what common pitfalls to avoid. But getting in the habit of taking care of issues doesn't only help you to improve your technical skills. It also builds a good reputation and respect among your colleagues and management. And it's quite a good reputation to have to be the guy who cares and who will take care of it. As software engineers working as part of a team, our daily work usually consists of working on some sort of tickets or tasks, be it as part of a scrum sprint or of a Kanban board. The thing to note is that some tasks matter more than others. In my opinion, there is a difference between creating and replicating. So what do I mean by that? There are tasks like implementing a new endpoint for a web service. And usually there are already plenty of endpoints and it is a problem already solved. You might need to implement a bit of business logic, like filtering, a little bit of aggregating, but it's basically a task of yet another dot, dot, dot. And don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with tasks like that. And they hopefully enable a feature that will bring some value to a customer. Yeah, you actually probably also are able to build a reputation as someone who can accomplish many of those tasks. But in my opinion, there is another way that will make you more successful in the long run. Do tasks that actually create a blueprint of how to do things. For example, if there is a task about building or improving a CI CD system, or maybe something to come up with a concept for caching and to implement some helpers for other team members to use that. Those are tasks that actually matter because they have a, some sort of a multiplicator built in because now you are enabling others by creating new things instead of just replicating what is already there over and over and over. Sure, those things are harder to do, but this is also where you will grow and become more successful. Also, you might not always have the option to only cherry pick what you want to do, but every now and then there will be the chance to create instead of replicate and you should actively look out for it and take it in that moment. If you liked the video so far, it would be great if you would subscribe to my channel to get informed whenever a new video drops. It probably has a reason why RTFM is such a meme in the IT community. Some people try to burden someone with their problems to avoid doing the actual hard work, asking questions before even trying something themselves. and. Don't be that guy. Get into the habit of reading documentations and other resources yourself before bothering other people. This will help you build the skill to figure things out by yourself without relying much on help from others. And eventually this will improve your standing at work and you will become the guy that other people turn to when they have a problem or a question. I don't say that you should never ask your colleagues for help, but I'd rather show first that I tried to solve the task at hand myself before asking other people for their help because then you can reference things in the documentation that you have already tried and also save them some time while they are trying to help you. This will bring you many bonus points from your colleagues because they will know that you are not wasting their time, but that you actually need some help. Many years ago, when I was a junior software engineer, I was mainly working with Java frameworks. Those were typically configured using some pretty ugly XML files and everything was very complicated and cumbersome. But at some point, a new programming language 
and almost more importantly, a new web framework increased in popularity. That was Ruby and the Rails framework. And many people jumped on that new technology because it had a very different approach. It was conventional over configuration. So as long as you use the framework as it is intended to be used, you didn't have to configure much at all. Because so many people tried the new framework and saw the new concepts, those concepts eventually also ended up in newer versions of Java libraries and frameworks, like for example Spring. What I'm trying to bring across with this short story is that there is a lot of benefit to explore concepts that are used in other programming languages or frameworks, even if it is maybe unrelated to your current project at first. What I always do, but maybe it's just me and I'm a little bit crazy, is I always grab some programming books when going on vacation. But I make sure to only pick books that I'm interested in and that cover topics that I don't have the time to explore at work. For example, if you mainly work with an object-oriented programming language, try a functional one and think about what concepts could be useful in your day-to-day -day work. And maybe that would be a good point to go completely crazy on that like button down there. Thank you very much. Nowadays, in the time of microservices and in the age of big data, it is, in my opinion, important to get into the habit of thinking in systems rather than in classes when it comes to architecture and how to build a service that achieves a specific functionality. There was a shift several years ago and most projects moved away from one huge monolithic application towards many smaller applications. And to be honest, most of the backend applications I worked on in the past were only a few thousand lines of code. But there are typically several of those in the scope of one specific team. And when switching to data engineering, it is even more cluttered. You have serverless functions doing some helper tasks, you have data transformation jobs, you have machine learning jobs, and so on and so on. It's not enough anymore to focus on one application, but in my opinion, you should get into the habit of thinking in systems to really make the next step and therefore become more successful. When there is a new feature that needs to be implemented or a new data processing pipeline, think about how you would design it, what deployment units would be necessary, what responsibilities should those have, and what should happen in case of error. Nobody likes working with assholes and it doesn't matter how good that person is in his job, so be nice. People spend a lot of time at work and with their colleagues. And the last thing they typically want or need is someone who is unpleasant to work with. It is much better to be a nice and helpful person that maybe lacks some skills than to be the person that has all the skills, but that is a pain in the butt to work with. Because if you are a nice and helpful person, you will get better because your colleagues like you, and therefore they are more likely to help you and therefore you will become better and more successful. To me it's interesting how none of those things is master your programming language or become an expert in 20 programming languages. The truth is you need to be good enough with the tools you use on a daily basis, how you use them, what you do with them and your general attitude towards work and your colleagues is what really makes the difference in my opinion. If you liked this video, you could also check out this video in which I share my experiences about working as a freelance software engineer. So far, see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.